So all the uh, theorems that we learned earlier, the corresponding angles theorem, alternate interior angles theorem, alternate exterior angles theorem, same side interior, they were all based on knowing that the lines were parallel to begin with. So if we know the lines are parallel, what that tells us about the angle measures, okay? So the converse, if you remember converse, is when we switch the if and the then statements, okay? So before it was if the lines are parallel, then we know these certain things about the lines. So our converses are gonna be the switch, okay? So on this first example, when we do corresponding angles, okay, we're gonna take the if statement and put it first. If the pairs of corresponding angles are congruent, if we know that, then, then we can state that the lines are parallel. Okay, so it's just switching it. Okay, so original statements, we know the lines are parallel. It tells us certain things about the angles. Um, with the converses, we just switch them. So alternate interior, if the alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are gonna be parallel. Seems rather repetitive, but same with alternate exterior angles converse. If we know the alternate exterior angles are congruent, then we know the lines are parallel. Starting to use my shorthand in there with the congruent symbol and the parallel symbol instead of writing out the words. Okay. And lastly, consecutive interiors. If the consecutive same side interior angles are supplementary, this one's a little bit different. If they're supplementary, then that tells us the lines are parallel. Okay, so we're going to use those in some of our theorems and proofs. Okay, uh, our last property here is the transitive property of parallel lines. And it tells us if two lines are parallel to the same line, then they're going to be parallel to each other. So if P and Q are parallel, and Q and R are parallel, then that means that P has to be parallel to R. So the Okay, using the information we know down there on this next set they want us to say find the value of x that makes m parallel to n so on set one those two angles that they've given us are corresponding angles so if we want to make the lines parallel then those two angles have to be congruent which means we have to set them equal to each other and solve and we end up with x equals five. On number two, the two angles that they gave us are alternate exterior angles. If those lines are parallel, the alternate exterior angles have to be congruent, which means they have the same measure. So we're gonna set those equal to each other and solve. Okay, go ahead and pause if you haven't gotten all that written down. Okay, same goes for down here. All right, the question is, in the, in the exercises, decide whether there's enough information to decide that M and N are parallel. Okay, so make sure you're paying attention to the fact that we're talking about line N and line M. Okay, especially the ones that have more than one, two, or two lines that look parallel, okay? So on this first one, they have the corresponding angles marked congruent. So by the converse of the corresponding angles theorem, line M is parallel to line M. I should have written that. Okay, on this next one over here, uh, those are vertical angles. Vertical angles, we're only referencing how the transversal cuts one single line. We have no idea how it's cutting on N other than it looks parallel. So that is not enough information because vertical angles don't tell us anything about how the other line intersects. Um, on number five, that's the same thing. Those are vertical angles. So again, it's not enough information. And lastly, down on number six, those are the two angles that are given. Notice they're given on line M and line N and how they intersect the transversal. If one of them was marked on S, it wouldn't help us. 
we had to pay, we're just paying attention to those two lines. And M is parallel to N, and our reasoning is converse of alternate exterior angles. Remember, if you know the lines are parallel, it's the normal theorem. If you're using the angles to prove the lines are parallel, then you're going to throw the term converse in front.